Hello and welcome. You're listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Maria Maciccini to discuss the company's lead program. It's ANVS 401. She's the founder, president, and CEO of Anovis Bio. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Good morning and thank you so much for having me. Uh, if you would, give us a little bit of your professional background and talk briefly about being founder, president, and CEO of Anovas Bio. So I've been in neuroscience for almost as long as I can remember. And in the very beginning, the, the brain was a total black box. So it was really difficult to do neuroscience. And what people did mostly was then just look at the behavior and think that somehow they could make decisions about the brain by looking at the behavior. In the last 30, 40 years, we can actually look at the brain and then say it's this specific function in the brain that has something to do with the behavior we see. And in fact, a bunch of different drugs have evolved from that understanding, be that serotonin reuptake inhibitors for depression, be it like dopaminergic drugs for Parkinson's or Valium for sleep. So overall, though, Alzheimer's or neurodegeneration have been still a black box. And only in the last 10 years have we slowly started to understand how the brain functions or doesn't function in neurodegenerative diseases. So I became very fascinated because in my mind, the reason we lose function is that nerve cells die. And if we can protect nerve cells from dying, we do not lose the functions associated with that. So I started the company in 92. That company was supposed to protect nerve cells from dying in stroke. It didn't work out that well because, as you know, there still is not a drug on the market for stroke. Mm -hmm. However, I learned a lot, and then I started this company that protects nerve cells from dying in neurodegeneration, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's disease. And this time, I think we got it right. Why are Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease considered neurodegenerative diseases? Because the person afflicted with either disease loses some functions slowly. In Alzheimer's, if the functions lost are mostly in the brain. People start to forget. They get disoriented. They don't recognize people anymore. They don't recognize places anymore. And that is the to the nerve cells in the brain degenerating and eventually dying. In Parkinson's, the disease starts in the gut and in the periphery. So you see constipation, you see slurring of the speech, you see shaking of the hands, shuffling of the feet, and then only much, much later does it go into the brain. And again, the reason that these functions are impaired is that the nerve cells in the periphery start to die. Now, we only have treatments. There are no cures. If left untreated, what type of quality of life should these patients expect and their families? So, as you pointed out correctly, there is not a cure. The treatment for Parkinson's, the treatments for Parkinson's are pretty good, okay? You can really postpone the inevitable, which is really the end of life and the total incapacity to move and do things, by six to 16 years with the dopaminergic drugs we have. In Alzheimer's, the treatments we have, which is acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, are much less effective. They work between six and nine months, not between six and 16 years. But in both cases, while they do treat the symptoms, they do not change the course of the disease. Mm. So once the symptomatic effect is done, after, in one case, 10 years, in the other case, six months, the patient is where it, the patient would be if they had never taken the drug. Because the underlying disease cause is still there. The nerve cells still die. So basically, a person that has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and or Parkinson's can look to a life of continuously more impairment in whatever their impairment is, be that in movement, be that in thinking and then eventually total loss of the function. 
Now, Anova's bio has a lead compound, a uh, lead program, uh, ANVS401. Now, I understand that it, it's been shown to lower the levels of neurotoxic proteins for both Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Talk about this, this program and how it addresses both of these diseases. Yes, that's an excellent question because we believe, or pharma has believed for the last 20 years, that Alzheimer's is plaque and Parkinson's are Lewy bodies, which means Alzheimer's is a beta amyloid and Parkinson's is alpha synuclein. And especially in the last 10 years, research has made huge progress in figuring out what is toxic in the brain of an Alzheimer's and a Parkinson's person. And to our amazement, it turns out that amyloid, tau, alpha synuclein, and TDP43 are all four, these are four toxic proteins, but all four are toxic in the brain of an Alzheimer's patient. And if you turn it around, alpha synuclein, a beta, tau, and TDP43, the exact same four proteins, are toxic in the brain of a Parkinson's patient. Hmm. So if you just remove one, you really still have the toxicity of the other three proteins left. And our drug removes them all four. And that is why it can work, and it does work, in Alzheimer's and in Parkinson's, because it really removes the toxicity caused by these four proteins in both diseases. But it doesn't stop the progression, but it treats the uh, symptoms much better than previous treatments. Well, we are not 100% sure about that. And the reason is we do know as you pointed out correctly, from our short one-month study, that it treats the symptoms much better than anything else on the market. Yes. However, in animals, we have shown that it protects nerve cells from dying, and it does work until the mice are very old and die. So what we need to do now is replicate the short study to make sure it does work short-term, but then also add a long-term study 18 to 24 months mm -hmm. to show that, in fact, it doesn't just treat the symptoms, but it also improves the long-term outcome and maybe stops the course of the disease. In animals, it actually reverses the course of the disease, ah. but in humans, we do not know. What's next for Novus Bio? Can you tell us what type of pipeline expectations you have? Yes, absolutely. So we are... I have started to talk with the FDA about continuing into a short and a long-term study in Parkinson's disease. As I was just saying, the short-term study will replicate the short-term effects we saw in our phase two, and the long-term study will show that after two years, the drug still works. We are also going to talk with the FDA about doing the same in Alzheimer's disease, again, do a short-term study to replicate the data we have from the phase two, and a long-term study to show that the effect lasts. And that's really what we're planning for next year. We are also considering starting uh, NGS 301 for advanced Alzheimer's disease and putting that into phase two. But the first thing we want to do is two studies in Alzheimer's disease and two studies in Parkinson's disease to show that the drug works short and long term, and hopefully stop the course of the disease. Well, doctor, could you give us a website where we can learn more about uh, Novus Bio? Sure, www.novusbio.com. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for this information, and I'm looking forward to a conversation with you in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Maria Machakini. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com health professional radio.